guys, welcome to Flannel Jammies Farm. This is a channel about mostly my cross stitch and a little bit about our urban homestead, beekeeping, gardens, things like that. But I have this new obsession <laughs> with woodsies and calico critters. This is the woolly alpaca family. There's mama and she does uh, weaving and there's papa and he does knitting and there's their little daughter and she likes to embroider and then there's tiny little baby woolly alpaca it's crazy i am over the moon for these little things and a friend and i recently got together and we built them little houses out of um kind of vintage wooden cigar boxes. Whoops, I dropped my little glasses of wine, but look at the little house. Oh my gosh, there's little furniture we got at the dollar store and um, painted and I made a tiny little pennant for the uh, foot of the bed and we used, you know, uh, pattern paper to decorate the inside of the box. I was a little nutty and so I bought the picnic set to go, <laughs> to go with the woolly alpaca family. And I also, okay, don't laugh at me. Try not to laugh at me. I bought the car. Isn't it awesome? Look at this little thing. Oh my gosh. So now I sit around and play with my calico critters and woodsies and it's kind of silly for a grown up, but so much fun. Again, I do want to welcome you if it's your first time here. We don't always play with little critters, but sometimes we do. And I welcome you. If it's your second or third or 21st time here, thanks for coming back. I'm so glad to see you. It's been a while. Today is Wednesday, June 12th, and I am going to get started telling you a little bit about my cross stitch. Let me put all of my little, my little friends away. <laughs> um, so, oops, cherry cruiser off to the side. Before we get started, I wanted to extend so much gratitude Many of you reached out with either notes or messages, very concerned about me and the people in my community. We had, on May 31st, there was a mass shooting at our Virginia Beach City Municipal Center. I worked for the city for several years and know many people in the city. It was quite, uh, quite a horrible day, and we are still, as a community, recovering. But I did want to thank you all. You have extended your thoughts and your prayers and asked after us and after our community, and I am so grateful. Thank you. So let's get started with FFOs, Fully Finished Objects. In the previous video, maybe two previous, I showed you the Primitive Hairs Be Kind, and it's a beautiful little stitch. And I thought I had a frame in my stash that would work, but I really didn't. So, as we do, I went to Michael's and started perusing the aisles. Well, all of their spring things were on clearance for 60% off. And then I had a coupon for 25% off, even sale items. Okie dokie. So I found a clock. Isn't it precious? It fits perfectly. I changed kind of the layout just a wee bit. And what I did is I had my husband take the clock parts out and I covered the face of the clock in white wool and then um, added my stitching to it, stretched it so it was pretty much where I wanted it. And then I had this beautiful bee ribbon and I added a bow at the bottom in the bee ribbon. And I think it turned out really beautiful. So this is going to hang on my wall and I'm going to always look at it and remember to be kind. So let's go on to finishes. I have one finish. 
my dear friend Robin at Dying to Stitch, hello Robin, um, gave me a kit from Shepherd's Bush and it was a beautiful kit from several years ago that was on 10 count fabric. And again, I talked about this in a previous video. I'd never stitched on Tula 10 count fabric. It was using three strands of thread, which I've never done. And it had these adorable tiny little buttons to go on it. So I finished it. Isn't it sweet? Oh my goodness, I just love it. It was so fun to stitch and went really, really quickly. I just love the way it turned out. Here are the tiny buttons. Here's a butterfly. Here's a tiny little bee. Oh my goodness, it's so precious. Robin, thank you so much for the kit. It was so much fun and I, I just can't wait to fully finish this. So let's talk about my whips, my works in progress. I'm taking part in something sponsored by Jen at Corks and Stitches. Hi, Jen. Jen has been doing these amazing 24 hours of cross stitch marathons, right? She did one with her mom and she's recently done another one and there's one coming up in August, I believe. Well, Jen has put together a hashtag 24 hours of cross stitch June 2019 challenge. And it's basically an acrostic. So she took the letters for the words 24, for 24 hours, and allowed folks the opportunity to choose one project for each letter or one part of a project for each letter um, and stitch on those things throughout June. The really cool thing about this challenge is it's so flexible. Jen has really worked hard to make it easy for everyone to participate, even a slothful stitcher like me. So I chose 10 projects and she gives you the option of either choosing how much time you're gonna spend stitching on each one or how many stitches you're going to put into each one. Now, I don't count my stitches. Mm, I'm not Lynette, I don't do math. So I'm counting my time. So I chose my 10 projects and I put a challenge amount for myself for each one. And what's really cool is you can start with as little as 24 minutes. Everybody can do that, right? Right. Jen's also created a Facebook group for the June 2019 challenge and Facebook event and also for her 24 hours of stitches. And that's just a great place for people to share, to ask questions, to check off their progress. It's wonderful. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna tell you all about them. So for T, oh my goodness, I have a little mess here. Hang on a second. So for T, I've got HL's Moth, my Star Wars bag from Made by Mama Joan. This bag the best ever! Um, so HL's Moth, this is a pattern by Kathy Barrick. And I know you're wondering, so what's the T? Because the first one is the T in 24, remember? Um, so the T is for, this is a reproduction of an antique sampler that was actually found by Teresa Vanette. And so the T is for Teresa. I I love this project. I can't get enough of this project. I'm having a really difficult time not going back to it over and over again. I really love it. I'm stitching it on 36 count mink from r, &R Reproductions. And here it is. Oops. Oh my goodness, I'm out of practice. So there it is. So I've done the body and the antenna and I'm starting this lower wing. It is so much fun to stitch. And it go, it, I know it seems really weird because it feels like it's almost full coverage, but it seems to go really quickly. And many of you have commented on my fifth element, uh, needle minder. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so that's HL's Moth. And remember that was for T in the 24. 
So in 24, the next one up is W. W, I've chosen, again, a Mama Joan bag. This is the Donna Ray style. Um, I've chosen Words to Live By by Heartstring Samplery. I haven't started this one yet. That's the other cool thing about this, this challenge is you can go in any order you want. It's great. I love it. So flexible. So Words to Live By, and I'm going to be stitching Love. Um, Sarah Tatum and I believe Glenn at Southern Stitcher are going to be stitching this along with me and hopefully we'll all get through it. But that'll be for W. Okay, so 20. Next comes E and I have, I know, I have a thing for Made by Mama Jo bags. <laughs> um, and it's in a beautiful bee bag, right? I love this one because right at the top it says her Royal Highness, Queen Bee. So cute. Um, I'm going to be doing Blackbird Designs, Honey Bee. And so the E is one of the E's in Honey Bee. It's the closest thing I could come up with. So I haven't decided on my fabric yet. I've got a couple in here, and I've pulled a couple of threads, but I just can't decide yet. So when the time comes, I'll make a decision. All right, so 20, T-W-E-N. Ah, oh, yes. This one's in a So Much to Love bag. These bags are awesome. Isn't that beautiful? Beekeeper bee bag, you know. So this one in N is Birds of a Feather, No Bees, No Honey, which is a beautiful pattern. I'm doing it on 36 count Patriots Brew from r, &R. And I'm just going to do the center section. I'm not so sure about these large words around the outside, so I'm just going to do the center section. But no bees, no honey. Here's my progress. And this one is done. I challenged myself to do 240 minutes stitching on this, and I did, and this is how far I got. I also checked off as completed. I challenged myself for 240 minutes on HL's Moth, and I checked that off as well. But this one is no bees, no honey. Okay. So T-W-E-N, we have another T. This one is the 12 Days of Christmas by Plum Street Samplers. I know, I keep working on this one, just tiny bits at a time, but this, this helped me. Um, I only challenged myself to 24 minutes because I thought, why not? Let's throw a couple of 24 minutes in there. And I completed it. And what I did was on the third day, and I just had this part. And I was able to do one of the hens and start a second one. So that was kind of cool for 24 minutes. Okay, so that's the tea. All right, I know it's a big board. Oh my goodness. So next is the Y, and I chose a favorite of mine. Here's another made by Mama Joan Donna Ray style bag. Um, I'm doing Heartstring Samplery Yukon's Christmas List. And remember, this is the one that. Um, was inspired by the 1964 Christmas film, um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and you know, uh, Yukon Cornelius is in there. <laughs> I love him. Anyway, this is my progress before I start. So this is where I am. And when it comes time for me to do this one, I've challenged myself to do 240 minutes of stitching on this. So we'll get to see how far I get. I'd love to have this one done by Christmas. So great. Okay, 24, so we're now at F, okay? And that one I'm doing home from C. And this is the one from the Dying to Stitch Retreat. It's by Blackbird Designs, and this was the Friday night project. So it's the smaller of the two that we got that weekend. And Here's where I am, and I'm challenging myself again to 240 minutes. 
So we'll see how far I get on this one too. And I have this beautiful Moon Needle Minder by Abby Top Knot Stitcher. Isn't it great? Anyway, hope to get some good progress on that one. All right, O. Here was my connection for O. It's, it's black, oh, here we go. Let me just show you. Here's my bag. It's Blackberry House by Plum Street Samplers. Here it is. And I keep wanting to stitch on this and I don't, and I don't know why, because I love it so much and I want it done and I have the cabinet and it, anyway. So where's the O? There's no O in any of this. So my connection is it's an old whip. <laughs> so that's my O. And remember, here's where I got. Okay, it's in my scroll frame. And I'm starting at the bottom with the alphabet and here's where I am. So we'll see how far I get. I have challenged myself to do 480 minutes on this. So we'll see. Next up is you, and this one's in another So Much to Love bag. Isn't it pretty? Oh my goodness, look at those bees. <laughs> um, this one is one that's inspired by Glenn, Southern Stitcher. She did it like lightning fast, and then Linda at Blue Horse Yellow Cow did it, and she got done, and mine is still in this bag waiting for me to do it. I'm sorry, ladies. But it's Cheerful Up, that's where the U comes in, Cheerful Up, and this is by Tempting Tangles Designs. And I'm challenging myself again 480 minutes because I need to get this done. We want to cheerful up, everybody. So I want to get that one done. I'm going to do it on 36 count espresso from r, &R Reproductions. And I think, I think I'm going to do it um, in Gloriana cranberry but I also really love this Gloriana raspberry parfait so I don't know yet we'll see who knows I may mix the two <laughs> and last but not least is the letter R and this one is an old one and it's in my uh, so much to love Raven bag. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh, I love this bag so much. And it's Plum Street Samplers Salem Sisters 3. And I started this a long time ago and I really want it finished. We've been to Salem. It was very, very moving for me. And so I really want this finished. And the reason that it's R because it's in the Raven bag. <laughs> oh goodness. I've challenged myself on this one to do 240 minutes and this is my starting point. Okay? So that's Salem Sisters 3. My little witchy poo needle minder. So those are my whips that I'm currently working on that I'm really excited for this challenge because it's pushing me at a time when I really needed it to get some progress done. So I'm excited and I really want to thank you Jen Quirks and Stitches for doing this and for challenge, challenging all of us. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate it and all that you do. All right so next I wanted to talk to you about some Marvelous Makers. Yeah, Marvelous Makers. So the first one is someone local, and she's darling, and you know her. It's Betty Heck from Created to Create BH. Betty has started making project bags, and I was fortunate enough to be gifted with one. They're, they're the vinyl front style, her bags are so high quality. The stitching is perfection. Her fabric choices are beautiful. And she, she's just a sweet, sweet, darling lady. 
Once a month, she does a bag where a portion of the proceeds go to the autism uh, charity here locally. And so that's also, if you kind of don't know what bag you want, you can choose that one and know that you're doing good in the community as well. But this one's a bee bag, obviously, and it's stunning. It's so beautiful. So remember, that's Betty Heck, created to create BH. And I will, I will link these people below so that you can find them easily. The next one is Sally at the Humble Bumble Stitcher. Sally has the most beautiful shop and it's when you go to her website and you look at her shop there are dolls and there are stitched pieces, there are pin pillows, there are sewing accessories, there are scissors and trims and finished cross stitch pieces. So many meticulously handmade items. Well Sally sent me a doll. I'm going to show her to you. We've decided to name her Beatrix. And here she is. And those of you who follow me on Instagram, you've seen Beatrix. She has these lovely stripes on her legs. She has the most adorable mushroom pantaloons. I really want some in my size. Sally, can you make that happen? Because I want some. <laughs> and they've got tiny buttons on the side. Her dress is stunning, beautiful calico. And look at this trim. It's cross-stitched and inset into here, into the dress. Her little hand-knit sweater. She's got wings on the back, rusticated, just like I like it. And she's got a little, a little stingy nose antennae and a tiny queen bee crown. There's a little bee button on her sweater and she's holding a flower. The attention to detail in everything that Sally does is phenomenal. If you're looking for a gift item, if you're looking for something special for yourself, if you're looking for a new friend like Beatrix, I highly recommend that you visit the Humble Bumble Stitcher. Again, I'll link her below. Oh my goodness, so much fun. So let's talk about some to-doings. Um, it's June. We have lots of to-doings coming up. On June 21st, it is International Gnome Day. <laughs> no joke, it is. Um, Glenn Southern Stitcher is doing a complete blowout. She's doing a big retreat type party at Dime to Stitch that day. I have been enlisted as a helper gnome. She has made gnome hats for people. There are activities that we're going to be doing. I've heard a rumor that there's going to be a dance off. I would say stay tuned to Southern Stitcher on YouTube and uh, see what she posts. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of people joining us. Brandy at Every Home Needs a Gnome, Jen at Crooks and Stitches, Linda and Sarah at Blue Horse Yellow Cow, and the fun ladies at Stitch and Blues. Um, they think they're going to be better dancers than us, but I'm not sure. I think we're going to get it. And we have great costumes. And you'll get to see my pink gnome hat. I asked specifically for a pink one. <laughs> so much fun. It's all about fun, right? Anyway, um, after that, that afternoon, again, June 21st, the Virginia Stitchers meet for our monthly meetup at Providence Presbyterian Church here in Virginia Beach. And it's from 1 to 4 in the afternoon. We get together, we stitch, we snack, we chat, we laugh a lot. <laughs> we have so much fun. We have some friends who bring their children, some friends who come for a little while and then have to go. It's okay. We'd love it if you're in the area or if you're local, if you would join us. If you need more information about that, just send me a message um, either on Instagram or um, uh, through Facebook and 
we'd love to have you. We'd just love to have you. So that's on the 21st as well. Then on Saturday the 22nd, Lori Brecklin of Not Forgotten Farm is having her first summer stitch in at the farm. And this was, um, you had to make reservations quite a while ago. I jumped on it the minute she posted it. And so I'm registered. She's gonna have a lovely, lovely day on Not Forgotten Farm of stitching and goodies and yummy treats to eat and amazing vendors, amazing vendors. So I'm gonna go do that. Uh, I believe Amy Loves Toads is going to come. I, um, I think a lot of my local friends that uh, hang out at Dying to Stitch are going to come. Lots and lots of uh, just fun people there gathered to enjoy the love of needlework. It's going to be a great day. My husband's going to drop me off and he and Scarlett are going to go to Woodruff's Cafe and he's going to get pie. So that should be a good day for him too. <laughs> and then then the biggie shirt and bring here you want a stitch con sweatshirt yeah on june 26th through 30th it's the 27th but you know some people arrive a little early 27th through 30th it is are you ready stitch con cincinnati ohio 400 stitchers Oh my gosh. Okay, so I bought, <laughs> I got the t-shirt, right? Because everybody needs the t-shirt. But then I also got the sweatshirt because last year when I watched the folks at StitchCon, it was freezing in the stitchy room. So <laughs> I got the world's biggest sweatshirt so that I could put 18 layers under it, right? Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so much fun. I have so many friends going and I have so many people that I wanna meet. And if you are at StitchCon, if you're going to StitchCon, let me know. And if you are at StitchCon and you haven't met me, please find me and come up and say hello. I'm a hugger, so be forewarned. I will hug you. If you don't want me to, just say, <laughs> I understand personal space, so that's fine. But I just want to meet everybody and have a great time. Again, Tom and Scarlett are going to drive me and they'll be hanging out with me the whole time we're there. So it should be a great time. I'm so looking forward to it. So I'm having all this fun in June and there's a purpose for that. Um, I have been called back quite a bit early and unexpectedly to Johns Hopkins for another medical procedure. And I was able to um, talk to some folks there and push that until July so that I could go ahead and pack in as much fun in June as I could before going back there. So that's what we're doing. We're just kind of packing it all in. This weekend we're going camping. I love to camp. I'm going to be camping with my friend Marcy and her family and on the Eastern Shore. And I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. We're tent campers, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so I have some garden footage to show you. I know that a lot of you have been putting in pictures and video of your beautiful gardens. Absolutely stunning. And so I wanted to share a little bit of ours. We've got uh, footage from video footage from an open house that we had here a month ago on May 18th. We invited some friends from our church to bring their children and learn about growing things and composting and creating sweet little spaces in your garden and what to do with herbs and honeybees and honey and we had honey tasting and elderberry jelly tasting and scavenger hunt and so many fun things. So I'm going to put that video footage in, but because it was a month ago, our garden has changed drastically in the last month. <laughs> the tomatoes have exploded. It's crazy. So what I'm going to do as the video goes on, I'm going to slip in pictures of maybe what that area or what that plant looks like now on June 12th. So enjoy the footage. If you don't want to watch gardens, I completely understand. It may not be your thing and that's okay. 
So I'm going to sign off for now so that we end with the garden tour. And as always, my friends, I invite you to be the grace and the kindness that you want to see in our world. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. I wanted to welcome you to Flannel Jammies Farm. I just wanted to give you a peek at our gardens here. So this is coming in toward the house from the driveway. We had a little open house here today. We had um, lots of friends from church over who kind of toured our gardens and looked at our plants and our honeybees. Here we've got the front garden has rosemary and lavender and chives and basil, some sage. Our peony just stopped blooming. We've got pineapple sage, that big bush there. Look at our thyme. It's thyme and lemon thyme blooming. There's Mr. Flannel Jammies on the porch. <laughs> Hello, little doggy. We are um, certified wildlife habitat. We are also a way station for monarchs. We just don't have our sign yet. And the water barrel in the back is 127 gallons. It's from the Elizabeth River uh, Conservation Project. So here we've got parsley and dill for the butterflies. Lots of lambs here, and we've left it blooming um, for the pollinators. Under the dogwood, there's some hardy geranium. You know, it's bright right now, but hardy geranium is blooming. It's really pretty. More lambs here. Over here, we've got um, horseradish and St. John's wort, and this is comfrey that has the pretty purple flowers on it. Iris that have stopped blooming. It's very tall bushes are elderberry, and we, everywhere you see those little heads of blossoms, those will be berries. And we take the berries and harvest them and make juice. And then we make jelly and elderberry syrup. And over here is our blueberry patch. So we've got lots of blueberries that are getting ready to ripen. There's our little pawpaw tree. And then we have a larger one over here under the elderberry. Got Vitex back there. And then we've got a really tall bronze fennel. Again, another plant for butterflies. And there's a little milkweed we need to plant. And then everybody needs a scarlet in the garden, right? Right. Some fern. This is a viburnum that's coming back. It had some issues, so we gave it a hard prune. Here in the front, this is a black cherry tree that's coming along. We've got uh, hellebores or Lenten rose. And then we've got hawthorn, a lace cap hydrangea, which is really, really pretty. It's one of my favorites. And then azalea. And then a traditional hydrangea. We've got a border of um, grass there. And then another azalea. Again, this is the strawberry tree. And then we've got Joe Pie weed coming along. And then here is my secret garden. And you'll see we've got our little gnome flag, a bell to welcome you. goat by the fence. Yeah, the bird's nest that we found. Here's where the gnomes gather and talk and share the gossip of the gnome community. And then, 
as you turn around, there's a little bench for conversation. A little table for your cup of tea. And a watering can. Here we go out of the gnome or out of the out of the gnome garden out of the secret garden we're just going to follow the path toward the front door hope i'm not making you too nauseous <laughs> and here's more in the front we've got lots of parsley and alyssum Here's my time again, a red gazing ball. Of course, we want everyone to be happy. <laughs> and here we go, across the porch toward the rest of the garden. We're gonna go toward our rose and flowering apricot. And there's the flowering apricot right there, the rose to the right. And I wanted to show you our little um, wine bottle border. So we gather wine bottles. No, we don't drink all this wine, but <laughs> we do get them from friends. And we bury them upside down as a border around certain beds. And the cool part about that is that um, the ends of the wine bottles can be concave. And when it rains or when you sprinkle water, the bottoms can fill with water and birds are not birds bees can come and have a drink of water and we've got a little bird bath again for birds or bees and then this is our pollinator garden we've got a bottle tree of course because you know we need a bottle tree we've got aster to the right catmint daylily stelladoro Bee balm, purple coneflower, a little uh, artemisia. We set up a beehive here that um, visitors could take apart and see what the inside of a hive looks like. And then we've got more bee balm. Is Huffley and Tana's coming back, yarrow, more coneflower, more daylily, more lamb's ear. Today we set up a little free library. Not a permanent one, but just a small one here for books and plants. So we were giving plants away today too, as friends dropped by. We added a little bench for folks to just sit and enjoy a read. Here's my pot garden. So we've got a vitex growing on the, on the end there. Japanese maple, my husband, <laughs> vincas in the strawberry pots, we've got scabiosa and mountain mint, all kinds of good things. And this is my little fairy garden, right there. And then into the vegetable garden. So here we go, we've got the hose there, side door, and you've got tomatoes. And boxwood basil in the corner. Here's our monster kale and Swiss chard. We've had that in a low tunnel, um, protecting it from cabbage moth. You can see that cabbage moth flying. It's a little white, looks like a butterfly. There it goes. So we've been protecting these plants from that damage because they just their uh, little larva just chew it to death. And we've got a side garden here that's a little bit boggy, so we've put plants in here that might enjoy that. Although there's some comfort right there. It's also known as, um, I think, knit bone. You can make a uh, poultice from comfrey, and it's really good for deep bruising, um, breaks, lots of things like that. The windows along the fence here actually are dual purpose. They're decorative, which I love, but they also cover one of these raised beds 
during the winter to make a cold frame. So in this raised bed, we've got, uh, got some sunflowers, some nasturtiums, but we've also got some really great peppers. The smaller peppers here on the right hand side are boonie peppers that um, Lynette at Homesteading on the home front was kind enough to send us a dried pepper that we could harvest the seeds from. Um, she knew that Tom liked really hot things and so we're going to try them. Then we've got cucumbers that we're training up the trellis. We had the kids pull a carrot this morning, purple carrot. I like me some carrots. It's beautiful. <laughs> they were amazed. They thought it was going to be orange, but nope. And here we've got more potted plants that we're just kind of saving. Uh, tennis ball lettuce under the trellis. We've got tomatoes that we're going to trellis up there too. Here's kale and you can see tatsoi right there, that large flowery green plant. You can see the damage that the cabbage moth does. It just eats the leaves. And here at the end are carrots and radishes. And you can kind of see those in there, I hope, maybe. Yeah, there we go. This is a, a new kind of bed, and it's got milkweed and sunflowers and cosmos and zinnias and lots of fun little things right by the rain barrel. This is our This is our second rain barrel here that we use to water this garden. And there's our sign right by the compost bins. Flannel Jim's Farm. Okay, and here we go. Around by the shed. So here we are in the backyard and this is where the fun happens. So we've got Japanese maple that we sit under and some pots. Scarlet, of course. This is where I have some succulents growing on the shelf. Got a croquet set because who doesn't love that? And a big green egg because who doesn't love that? And here's our fountain running. It's very soothing back here. And here we go. We've got apple trees and lilacs along this border. Um, the bird feeder here, Tom likes to let the things that drop grow, so I made a special sign. It says, Weedus unknownicus, because who knows what that is. There's another teepee. We had one in the front yard, just for fun. This is my bee watching station, and here are my bees. We've got two Langstroth hives set up right here with a bottle tree, of course. And we've got equipment in the back because we wanted folks to see what the different equipment was and show them what a frame of wax comb looked like. So that was really fun. This is a bee watering station. So it's just a bird bath with decorative rocks in it so that the bees have something to stand on while they're taking a sip of water. Got a little columbine coming up in the tree right there. This is a big hibiscus that will bloom later in the season. And then we've got our top bar hives. Equipment there in the cold frame greenhouse, my tabletop greenhouse. Um, I use it in the winter to start seeds, but in the summer we store bee equipment there that we might need really handy. So we keep some pieces there. And there's our, I'll show you the bees coming in and out. Hi girls. Scarlet's just investigating. And I know you're gonna get sick of them, but here is yet another bottle tree in our little back patio off of our bedroom. That's a big tall smoke bush right there in the corner. So, and then we come back around. I hope you guys have enjoyed the garden tour. And now, back to stitching.
If I just say the words, is that enough to make them true? If I just say 